I see it pop up here and there, but mm -hmm. definitely uh, Warbreaker is more of of the the, the it's the popular pick. It, it it just and it makes sense because of you know what value you get from said rewards. Um, but even then, I mean, we've just been seeing the single target value from from body check reduction of of healing. But we are here on Tomb of the Spider Queen for game number four of our best of five series this evening. Thank you all so much for joining us in our Heroes Hearth in house league. Brought to you by Heroes Hearts Levity Clash League, which uh, season two is on its way. Just be, just get your butts ready. Is it? it mm. It's coming. It's coming. At some point, it's 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 gonna happen. <laughs> you know. Okay, so I got. I, I obviously yeah. have multiple hot takes. An evening. Okay. I have a, I have a new hot take. Let's I th hear it. I think that Garrosh is trash. Why is that? He. He's so, it's just so linear what he wants to accomplish and do mm -hmm. that if any team just plays around the character existing and like the fact that he's going to try to throw something and then cue it, then the character does nothing. He can't be creative. He can't get cute. He can't do things that are like, wow, that player just did something that I wasn't ready for. Right? Like... Garrosh doesn't I, have that in his arsenal. And thus, I, I feel like... I, I follow you, yeah. All he is is like a... Hope that the other team fully engages in all-ins. Give him a big burst of heal when he's at like 10% health, so he's like massively tanky. And then like punish them for overextending. Does that make sense? So so, so here's what I want to... Here's, here's what I want to say about that, though. So... You're saying you're you're presenting Garrosh in kind of like a, a team setup where they're going to be initiating the fight, correct? Like they're stepping into the enemy team to to do all of this. Because mm -hmm. what I'm thinking is you pick Garrosh into a team that is stepping into you, and then you play around. You use Garrosh's kit at that point to then manipulate the fight. You know, you have tosses to maybe throw them further into your team to get blow ups or maybe out to you know control the fight into the phrase a good tool as well so while i agree with you that he is very linear in a in a, in a in an aggressive composition i think he is very just like it's like it's like stitch is looking for a hook or an etc looking for that power slide mosh like it's very telegraph like you know they're kind of angling for it they're looking for it um at least in maybe the tier of play that i that i that i'm at but um in these situations like i think garage can be a good defensive and control tool it's just it's it's how you draft them because yeah if you draft them in these situations where you're stepping into the enemy team and they're just like nope we're just gonna back out or we have Medivh and we'll portal away etc is another one that just like keeps yeah, and, Wing the garage yeah, so so it's like there's definitely like there's there's counters in it, and that's why like I like him but at the same time I don't like it's I'm I'm on that teeter totter okay. with him just, where I'm like he's got a place but I feel like it's very like it needs to be drafted and it needs to be kind of like, I like the, I like that I think you're I think yeah. you're you're right on that I think that there is a place for him actually and he is one of the better defensive tanks, right? He's yeah. very similar to, like, Joanna in the sense exactly, that, like, yeah. you, you his in existence the, in the... is to stand in front. Um, and I guess where my frustration comes from is that players and teams play him as the aggressor, like, as yes. the engager. It's like, it doesn't work that way. Like, if the other team doesn't want it to happen, it won't. And while mm -hmm. I recognize, if we make a comparison between him and, like, Stitches, while yeah. Stitches... They're both like telegraphed on what they want to do. At least Stitches can be creative in the fact oh, that he doesn't have to hook from where you can see him. He can hook from fog. He can hook behind walls. He doesn't have to hook at all. He can hook when people run away. And he's he can, still... He point blank for some extra damage. Yeah. yeah and he's still <laughs> effective because of the rest of his kit. Um, yep. I think it's. I think it's also just. I, I know we have a draft unfolding, but I think yeah, this is a really good talking point. Um, but I think it's. It's if we get to this point of of how tanks are played within Heroes of the Storm at this point, because because Joanna is is definitely a control type tank. You know, you, you kind of mm -hmm. play around that. You're able to you know throw people around. You have slows. You have shield glares. You have the iron skin. But I feel like a lot of Joannas nowadays are they're kind of just rushing in with the condemn, and, and then, then when they need to get out, slapping. they hit D. <laughs> yeah. And so and so and so like, but that's like that's the thing is like they're playing this Joanna in like an aggressive composition. So like that's where like I think tanks kind of fall into this weird spot where it's just like some people are playing them the way that it's like intended if you will and there's some people who are just like i'm just going in because i can't die and i'm joanna but um you're, our you're... draft has basically just come through at this point we have an anna jaina deathwing garage mayev on the right um mephisto etc hanzo the york on the left and they're gonna need a healer uh anna was already picked up on the right hand side i was here's... gonna say like mephisto and then i would be great but um what are you thinking here's the garage pick too we're gonna just i know we just get to see it now that we've bashed it let's 
You know what? Let's see. Let's see if they play it in this defensive mechanism because Mephisto's going to dive into them. ETC is going to dive into them. New York's going to heckle and try and get to the back line. Let's see if they use it in this defensive manner or if it's just going to be slap, you know, just hit Indomitable and rush on in and try and throw mm -hmm. someone. Because that's that's the other, you know, it's, it's the same premise as Joanna. Hit D, walk in, condemn. Hit one or whatever you throw Indomitable on and just walk into the enemy team and try and get a toss. Like, so in this case, I, I actually, you know, looking at the two drafts, I, I, I think Negrosh is a good pick here because mm -hmm. his job is to do nothing like like the game <laughs> the game is like the game is not going to be won by him it's going to be won by Maev and jana right and this falls mm -hmm. into exactly what i was saying like what grosh is really cool at doing is like just like getting caught and be like oh i guess i'm dead but like oh i guess i also now casually have 70 yeah, armor yeah. and like oh ana just hit me with a heal grenade and then queued me two times and now i'm full health you know um, while Jaina and Maev are just pulling all the shots, right? Uh, so you know it, it's it's funny because I'm what my take is still not I'm not off on what I had taken, but you're you're right in the sense that Garasha is very good at defending, and in this case he's gonna protect the Jaina, he's gonna look for that opening for Maev, um, and he's gonna do a good job. But we are jumping into game number. Four, right this is game number mm -hmm. four yep um we have team towers here We're gonna be on the blue side got filth rocking at what looks to be a hanzo yep uh it's gonna be kelsier on that mephisto funds on the leork jachuggy is on the etc and weary day on the end one on the right hand side we got the members of heaps up two and trying to close it out in a 3-1 fashion they got valmar on the deathwing lupus on the garage tiger jk will be on the maev pirate rum will be on the jaina and porky on the ana Mid lane engagement though, a little poke back and forth. Mephisto will be going into the Furious Spark at level one as we've been seeing most Mephistos kind of falling off of the unyielding power. Um, this 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 uh, Lightning Nova build has been working out for them. They also go into cooldown reduction with gen regeneration globes and and being able to. It, there's there's a really cool. Is that the level that four seeing. talent? What is it? Yeah yeah. Everyone yep. talks about one of the talents is like super busted. It's it's that one because you're getting you and then there's there's another talent as well. I think at 13 or 16 you can get trade. I think it's I think it's 13. You can get more cooldown reduction on your abilities. Like it's 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 absolutely wild. Like how much CDR you can put onto Mephisto, and it's um we were talking with teams. Um I can't, I think I was talking with teams during Regen Invitationals, and I was saying you know like where 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 is the big priority for Mephisto? Is it just kind of Volskaya and Infernal Shrines where you get those moments where everyone's kind of clumped up and they're like yeah. And this is, it, it's kind of like that. I mean, you do have some some clumping up and you do have the four member rotations to get value from it. We'll see how this works out as the game does progress because uh, wave clear wise, I, I really give this over to the side of keeps. Towers does have some decent wave clear, but that's going to come through with their kit. Yeah, especially what, pre, pre four, right? Their, their yeah. wave clear is pretty no atrocious. Yeah. There's, no, there's no explosive arrow. But, you know, post four, they, they'll be all right. They definitely are mm -hmm. behind um, Jaina. May have and even Deathwing, right? They're, they're all like very, very effective wave clearers. You see Pirate just not really caring that funds existed. Yeah. Just stepping up into him, eating a bunch Ooh. of damage. Lupus learning what towers do nowadays. Casually they're losing. Pl they're playing around with their natural armor though, which is really mm -hmm. cool because I actually saw them only go down by like one, negative one armor or something like that. So I, I also want to show like that was that was a very very good uh, groundbreaker. Like that just to be able to predict oh, yeah. exactly where Leork was landing. That was just it's little things like that that, that just really stand out to me. Kelsier, I was looking to see if they're gonna get thrown over the wall, but it doesn't look like they were going for it. Not gonna waste the cooldown on something that's just gonna blink back into the back of mid lane. But fours up on both sides, and they do have those those wave clear towns as we were talking about, as well as the spite. From Mephisto, increased regeneration globe healing duration by 150%. Every tick of regeneration globe healing activates Lord of Hatred, reducing basic ability cooldowns by one second. And you can already get basic cooldown. You already get cooldowns onto that as well from hitting heroes with uh, Lightning Nova as well, and Skull Missiles and Shaded Mephisto. Like you get all cooldowns of, onto those. Like it. yeah. it's just CDR on top of CDR from Mephisto. So we'll keep it. We'll keep an eye on those talents and how they affect that as the game progresses here. But looks like mid lane's got some good pressure coming in here, Mac. Yeah, a lot of a lot of value out of that hard camp. Um, probably picking up the wall. Yep, the wall does fall. Uh, good good first push of the of the game, and they do already have ten gems in. We are getting right around to the time in the game where teams will be picking up those fifty gems. Um, again, as I kind of always talk about on towers or not on towers of Tomb Spider Queen, um, kind of watching where the gems are at is very important, and knowing where the gems are at. 
Uh, so in this case, like, Funz has a lot of gems, and you usually see it from the solo lane side. Uh, you just need to make sure that you know where Funz is at. Actually, a good sleep here connecting on a Got Filth, but ETC able to knock the Grosh away. Um, couldn't yeah, have no he good. would not have been able to knock a Murdens on away. I'm, I'm just gonna point that out, but you know, Garage, <laughs> the lumber, the lumber himself. Uh, but yeah, we to put emphasis on funds and him having the gems that will probably give them the turn in is gonna be an important fact here from the side of keeps. So we keep that in mind. Down for the Maya, which is not something we see too often. It's a very difficult talent to finish out. I mean, you need, you need a lot of players to stack up. I mean, specifically to finish it out completely, you need four people to stack up, and it's much like Subdue from Joanna. You need to be able to hit it on four heroes. But there is some other values within there before you even finish that out, so they'll be able to scale things up a little bit for themselves as the first Web Weaver phase will be coming out in favor for the members of Keeps. Will be Red Web Weavers, but that will be Deathwing and Toppling going down. Sleep Dark goes out. A lot of damage on the funds. They're trying to get these 21 gems to fall, and now that's a big, that's a big trade for them. I didn't see how many gems Deathwing had, um, but Ooh. losing 20... Oh, no, wait, can they get him? Kelsier just got him with the Kelsier flash over. Kelsier just hit him with this whole 34 <laughs> gems. Because I actually had, um, because the observer mode I'm using, I can actually see exactly who's holding what gems. Uh -huh. And I, I was just, I saw, like, someone's numbered skyrocket for a second. I was like, dear lord, all right, well. Yeah, no, they, they don't zone those gems away quick enough, and Kelsier's able to grab them, but they need to make sure Mephisto doesn't die now. And I think this is where their team's gonna have the hardest time, is clearing spiders. Yeah. Um, they don't have very good spider clear. Well, and, and you can see here, you know, Deathwing creating pressure as well, flying in. Um, Godfield is probably all of their wave clear, and Maev's doing a really good job of just pressuring the fact that she exists. Actually, I, I honestly think Hanzo can be very aggressive. So can they mid um, now with the tower changes, right? Mm -hmm. If they shoot, like if the Maev chooses to dive Hanzo top, she probably just takes at least half of her health, right? Like, Yeah, I, d I don't think she lives if she... She might get the kill, but she might go down themselves. Yeah. Tiger JK trying to make their way out of here, gonna get hit with the Skull Missile, and they just back out. Uh, Hanzo gonna get another Scatter Arrow out as well. They did finish the Simple Geometry at level 1. ETC has 8 out of the 20 stacks on the Proc Rock at level 1. Jane at 17 out of the 20 on the Fingers of Frost. She's also only about... Uh, She's got only 1,700 on the uh, baseline cluster, so she got away on that one. Garrosh did go into the Warbreaker at level 1, so they are going to be at 10 out of the 15. So they've got the first one, which is going to be uh, damage over time, and then the second one at 15 is going to be reduction. So I think I might have said that a little wrong earlier. Kelsey are going to be targeted. They're going to be thrown out of position. They're going to blink forward. A lot of damage onto them. Healing grenade goes out. Excuse me, Biter grenade goes out trying to get that healing reduction. There's the oh, no. incinerate, but they blink forward. They they go back exactly right where they were, and Jachuggy needs to grab all these gems. They're going to try and zone them away, but I think they get all of them, and that's going to be 54 on ETC. The care the care package has been delivered, and we, we oh. now have an emphasis on who has the gems, Baja. Where are those gems at? Who should we be very focused this on? Is it. This is this is all we do. We just follow ETC at this <laughs> yeah. point. This is the ETC stream. They actually get an Entomb onto Tiger. Light Bomb comes out just in time, gets the last little bit of damage. They actually drop the Warren's Cage. Uh, scatter Arrow from Hanzo finds the last little bit of damage they need onto that. Warlord Shells <gasps> comes out. Toss goes out as well. ETC is going down. No. Funds very low. Those gems There's are on the right side of the map. There's of them. No. And Funds is going to go down. And Weary Day taking a massive amount of damage as well. Oof. That's a rough uh, go. That's a real rough go. The one the one thing you need to not do when you have all the money in the bank. There are just, benefits and there are also there are counterpoints. There just there's there's just there's just sucky moments when you when you throw all of your gems onto one hero or the vast majority and that's a great example of, you know, like cool, it's all in one. We only have to have one person turn in, but that person can't also well tank in a sense cuz ETC as we were talking earlier likes to power slide in and try and live. Yeah, this in this case he used a heroic uh, aggressively taking down 55 gems, but a good entomb here actually probably going to be enough to pick up the garage. He does unstoppable the light bomb. The W is going to connect. The taunt coming out as well. A nice groundbreaker, and this is it. You know, garage at 10 percent health, baiting out all the cooldowns. Shijogi going to go down. Weary day taking down. Leoric falling as well. It looks like if you get garage to 10 percent health and he has an auto behind him then he's doing his damn job i mean that's all i gotta say maybe i'm maybe i was wrong just pick the character get really low and then have ana behind you to pump i mean heels. that that worked out for them really well but i will say this deathwing landing helped out a ton mm -hmm. that definitely did work out for them really really well as i believe it what, um because this death drop is what they took at level seven so it's hitting an enemy hero while with destroyer or world breaker landing damage reduces their spell armor by 15 
for six seconds, and Deathwing's basic ability cooldowns by two seconds as well. Wow. That is, yeah, that's that, and they hit three or four people with that death like they they got a massive value from that death drop and i think that's when you know the spell armor reduction jaina just popped off and you saw so much damage come out from them and now red web weavers descending once again for the members of keeps they're saying that game three was a fluke on battlefield of attorney and they're gonna run it through mid lane they're gonna try and at least take a keep early as they get a whole lot of damage under jashuggy nice use of the leap of faith for mandu to keep them alive but now pressure coming on through mid lane and, and mounting in top as well yeah this spider looking to probably chunk at least half of this full, uh, keep, if not the whole. Kelsier, an aggressive E there. Unpunished, the ETC able to W him out, but he does take a stun there from the Deathwing. Uh, yeah, they're they're pressuring in really well. The spell armor is going to go down from the hard camp. Uh, Spider about half health. I don't think it is going to take the keep here, but they are going to keep their team in the middle lane. Um, a lot of those side lanes to kind of pressure in. New York is doing his best out on the bottom lane to clear it up. Uh, a rotation coming out to the top lane, maybe looking to get that wall at least, if not the well, and probably set up for a uh, boss threaten, possibly, um, yeah. do the camps. Kelsey are doing a good job here to chunk out some damage as well on the Tiger, but we'll see where they decide to take it after getting up, uh, you know, basically all the front walls from the top and mid lane. Just gonna jump onto the vision. I, I currently have the vision for our blue team, at least for myself, and so they can see Lupus popping out here and there. Um, but that's that's really all they see. They think that they're actually on boss. That's why you see the Sonic Arrow going up there. There's gonna be Valmar dropping down. The armor reduction is gonna be on the arc. That will be a late bomb. They're gonna pull them back into the Warden's cage. There's gonna be an Entomb as well. No buried alive, but they still lock him into this awkward position. His funds will not go down at the beginning of this fight. They end up going down right there. Durance of Hate spreading to quite a few members. Huge groundbreaker out from the Garroshes. That will be a uh, Shade of Mephisto away. They're gonna throw them into the friendly team, and that will be Mephisto going down. They're looking to chase him further through mid lane as they've got a catapult already here and a wave coming in behind it. But now they actually say, you know what? Boss is looking pretty tasty, and they don't have any sort of web weaver turn in. Yeah, no web weaver. They'll probably opt to go hards and easies. Um, they can hold this boss decently well, but it is gonna be difficult. Uh, again, they, they don't have very good, like, kill target monster, right? Um, the Mephisto. Very good at dealing damage to heroes, but not as good dealing damage to waves and, and kind of minions. So we'll see. I I don't want to I don't want to call it and say that they can core right. with this, but it is possible. Uh, it really just depends on how heavy the engage is. If that's the choice they want to make, it looks like I'm not even honestly sure what they're doing. I guess they're just gonna it's kill funds even though they're two levels up. Oh, they're looking for sixteen with this one. Um, mm. I, I it just mm. it, it looks like they're gonna they're gonna clear things out and they're just gonna kind of back off right there. I do want to um we were talking about this a little bit at the beginning of the game. Um, Mephisto had some other talents that that reduced cooldowns as well. So Shard of Hate at level thirteen, basic attacks hit enemies near the primary target and activate Lord of Hatred against the excuse me and activate Lord against Lord of Hatred oh. against enemy heroes, reducing the basic ability cooldowns by one second per hero hit. Wow. Okay. So, so yeah, you have an activatable now. Uh, yeah, it's it's. Well, I mean, but the thing is, we'll see if it works out for them because, unfortunately, they just got a Leort kill and they're sitting very, very high in experience. 7,500 experience in favor for keeps just from heroic kills on the opposing side. It's just 2.1k. So, a lot of experience coming in from those heroic kills. This is 3 to 10 in levels and we have a bottom lane fort going down, but no web weaver turn in just yet for either side as they need 13 more on the side of the keeps and quite a bit more on, actually, I think just 12 more on the side of towers. It's funny, this is like an opposite of what we normally see where teams are like, the down talent tier forcing now tonight we've seen teams like be very disciplined on the fact that like yeah. they have a level lead it's 15 14 let's hang back and get our advantage before we do something and you know here they might be riding the fact that they're gonna have turn in very soon maybe pushing with a hard camp for that middle keep uh yeah, both and both still have that 16 away. yeah yeah, the, both teams have like three to four gems that they need to grab and turn in. So this might be a tight one. Um, we'll, we'll see here because I think it's only yeah, it's like it's a one way from the members of tower of, of keeps and towers. I think might be looking to to posture for a turn in here as Leorg does have that last little bit of gem pick up in top lane. But camp coming in through mid lane, I can't. I I would expect them to try and get a web weaver on top of this camp because spell armor pushing in as a team with a keep that already has the front gate down. That's huge for them. As there's the third web weaver wave wave coming out for the members of keeps, but this mid lane's already gonna get cleared out a little bit they've got some spell armor for themselves valimar um setting up over here i don't know if they're gonna go into the if they're gonna fly up at this time they do have it up and available if they want to try and fly, fly i don't 
He might oh, be fishing for a stun they're, or a cataclysm. They're, maybe they're yeah. going. They're, I think they're going to cataclysm into this because I was just like, why are they? They're set up on this far side mm -hmm. of the wall. How are they going to get over? Like onslaught doesn't go through walls as uh, Hanzo does get the uh, sonic arrow, and that will be web weavers descending now. Top lane, a little far back. Bottom lane and and mid lane crashing quite a few. Quite a ways up here, but this is going to be a big push in. They could look to end if they really want to on the side of keeps. It's going to be a potential swing around if the blue team can defend here. It looks like the keep yeah. is going to go down. Fun's taking a decent amount of damage, but he's able to drain up off of the Deathwing. Kelser doing his best. Pyro taking in a ton of damage. The arrow does connect onto the garage. He's able to unstoppable and run away, but a good entomb here. Is there any damage on top of it? The light bomb connects. Mosh pit onto two. Onto only on a two pirate walking away with almost. 10% of his health left. Tiger doing his best to cage people up, slow the enemy team down. Godfilth almost able to connect the scattering onto Pirate, but this this is kind of what I was trying to go into before the fight er erupted. You know, a, a, a fight in favor of Team Towers could lead to a turn-in, could lead to mm -hmm. a, a level stabilization, could lead to a second turn-in, could lead to a game-winning kind of play, right? Uh, so yeah. this was m very, very needed, and we only gonna lose a singular keep on their side obviously top being very weak probably want to get that wave turned out but really want to make sure that the turn in happens here guys we have only 20 seconds to make it happen so oh that's big deathwing gonna land here Sp spell armor reduced to chuggy taking a lot of damage they find the big old pop on to the jaina this is valimar now in a bit of an awkward spot as they're trying to get the ctc kill they do find it they're actually still fairly healthy a lot of gems on the bottom left of our screen as the camp was grabbed got filled very low onslaught goes in they find another kill deathwing is cleaning up light bomb comes out that doesn't really affect anyone outside the mayev that's going to be a endurance of hate deathwing will go down mayev gotta is is making plays happen here siege giants working out for them the entomb comes out they don't blink into it they actually blink into it at the last second they actually dodge a lot of porky's healing weary day trying to get the chastise does manage to land to do so sleep dark comes out they're gonna get the toss onto weary day they end up going down mcintyre what are we even watching we just saw a huge exactly 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 what you just put on screen that is exactly what we just witnessed <laughs> oh dude i don't what? I literally couldn't have said it. I was like, they just really need to make sure to get the turn in right here. Please just turn in. Hey, let's lose a 3v5. Is that cool? And then we'll lose all of our gems. They have like then... 80 gems near it. <laughs> 22. Oh, no. They haven't got a turn in yet here, McIntyre. I know. They could have got a turn in into a turn in into a turn in. Like, literally, they had so many gems. And now 20 talents here oh, is here for now the, boss. the members of oh, and man. boss. Yeah, they don't have a web weaver. Here we go. That this, is where, this is where Mephisto shows up, aces them for the boss, and they t t turn around. Nope, just kidding. We're going to clear the hard camps. Yeah, we, they're, they're going to manage their lanes. They're going to wait for Andu, <laughs> and they're going to look for 20. This could be death march through top lane. We, we really don't know. Like, I don't, I don't think they're going to be going for it. They're not going to back off and wait for another... 30 plus gems to, to get a turn in here. They're gonna they're gonna look to it's walk this in through top lane it's with 20 talents here advantage. At least yeah. I hope. I mean, what this boss is slapping for 650. And we 33, have 33,000 health. Look at as we look, we have what, Winter Mute. We got Destroyer's Rampage, Nano Boost. He's gone. He's gone double. He's gone for the double throw for the double stun. Vengeance. Mm -hmm. Was it Titanic Might? Yeah. I mean, this boss is going towards the core, and I don't. Unless the Hunter arrow connects onto Ano. Oh my god, please kill on Moshpik Moshpa comes out, Bellowing Roar is going to be there, Onslaught coming out from Deathwing, Jaina gets two kills, and then Ana goes down, that's Kelsey are so very low, Onslaught finds another kill, got filled from the back lines trying to make something happen here, but uh, they're the only one left, Cataclysm actually backwards into a <laughs> god fail. Onslaught doesn't connect as they get the uh, leap over the wall, but uh, the flank was attempted, they tried to make something happen here, but it looks like the members of Keeps are going to be taking game number four in our best of five Monday night in-house league. They'll take the series 3-1. GG. Well played. All right, it's going to be a GG. Coming out. A well, well executed win there. Um, I, I don't know. I'm kind of speechless, but sometimes it'd be that, like that, Baja. Sometimes it'd be like that. Well, I, like... We could make a highlight video of just tonight's shenanigans. Like, just bram, 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 Warwick, Warwick bram, bram, could just, yes, yeah, just, bram, just bram, slap bram, bram, some bram, bram, Benny Hill music on it. And just like, there are so many good Chen moments. Like, oh my God, there's so many. Like, it's, 
I'm thinking back, like we've had five, we've been doing this for five weeks now. This is the fifth week. We've been having some fun with this. This is prob probably, I think the most fun we've had in the nights. Like we bashed on some of the picks, we bashed on some of the heroes and whatever, but like the back and forth between these teams have been so entertaining. And like some of the plays and some of the, the attempts that they're making to, to harass each other have been so worthwhile. Like, I, I love this series. This is this is this is so good. But uh, congratulations to the members of Keeps here. They're gonna yeah. be taking a three-one. Should we? You want to do a, a little victory? Yeah, let's uh, let's do a victory lap over okay. over down their channel. Uh, you move. Will you move me? Did, I feel like you should. Uh oh. Oh, what's hey. up? Do you guys enjoy? Congratulations. Do you enjoy your uh. your victory? Victory Royale? Yeah, more or less. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> I want to ask this question now because okay. I, I want to know. Tomb of the Spider Queen, bottom okay. lane, Siege Giants, that hole. Okay. What are what are your comms like? Is it just like, don't die? Is it What I the fuck this, is like... happening? <laughs> I love what am I dead. witnessing? What is this? They're all dead. All right, let's go do boss. There you go, that's your comms. <laughs> yeah, that's the comms. <laughs> yeah, we were... Not I, even I, joking. I, I was like... I, as they killed your team, I was like, okay, they really need to just make sure to turn in their gems, and then they can possibly chain into a second one. And it was just like, simultaneously, I see ETC, like, going to stop the easy camp. He gets the slide. I'm like, okay, they're kind of throwing. And then he dies. Somebody else dies. The Deathwing just solo kills Hanzo. I was like, what the... We were soaking top lane. I was like, what is You're happening? like, what the? We were like, what the? F <laughs> I see 55 like, gems disappear. Hell? I was like, oh yeah, my dude, God. Dude, we were like, <laughs> after the fight, we were like, oh, they have zero gems. Oh. <laughs> but honestly, like, with, with the tower changes, right? It just feels like pushing with the objective is just so fucking hard anyway. Really? Yeah. Like, we couldn't get the mid keep. We were trying to get the mid keep, but we got it, but we got so chunked from the tower, from the fort, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I did see you all backing off off of that. Um, I want to I ask you this. Uh, no, no, go ahead. Sorry. I think you have more. You have oh, more no. Time. That's because the fort doesn't hit your tank and it hits your back line. when they come up to hit it. It's so bad. Like, so th this is the thing that I feel like I've noticed some of the players and teams doing. They're actually playing around that factor. So, like, typically, like, like Joanna has condemned. Like, let's say Joanna pops condemn and they're sieging into you. Like, some teams are actually stepping purposefully into the condemn. So that way, Joanna will be targeted by the tower. Is that a tactic that you're finding teams using against you or using against them? Probably not. We did that mid with Deathwing. We throw out lava pools and you just dance in between the tower aggro. So it just targets Deathwing. But before it shoots Deathwing, you move out of the range. Okay. But oh, wait, so you can range. actually just turn the keep yeah. off? Yeah, you just step back and forth out like max range. <laughs> what? Oh, so, so you're, just, yeah. you're just literally like getting it to like target you, then untarget, yeah. then reach They definitely yeah. didn't oh, okay. think that one through because you could well, have used that on like hella uh, characters, right? The thing is like. If you the don't death up, you just throw it under the gate. The well, gate like Lun up. Lunara, right? Technically, with Lunara, you should be able to do that. Lunara could do that too, yeah. Yeah, that's actually. I kind of feel like in. she gets punished though. Deathwing has perma stoppable. I guess so. doesn't get punished. I mean, if they don't have a Deathwing counter anyway, like that hero's just broken. Then they they had the Mephisto, right? They had a Leoric. Yeah, but like in the in the early game, the Mephisto doesn't do percent damage. They had the Leo, but Leo's not enough to oppress Deathwing unless he entombs him right away, right? And they blocks needed, and they needed a gray main, huh? They need they needed something to stop that. Yeah, that's why we banned like, it. Post we ten, like out of ten. Oh, yeah, we banned it. Yeah. They need they, they needed either a mouth heal to help that tens to oppress Deathwing with ult, or Leo's a good them. laner, but like that lane, the laning on on Tomb is so short. You know, you could just swap lanes. Like we had him top lane the entire time. What is and the, we had better, yeah. What was their What was their Was were they last pick? Were you guys first pick? We were first pick, yeah. Yeah, we were. First, we took Anna they, first. They banned yeah. Sil. What did they and... last pick? Was it Leo, right? Was it the I Anduin? Did they, they last, last pick? pick yeah, the, yeah, it was the Anduin. It was the. Oh, it might have been the Anduin. Yeah, it's kind of gross. I'm not sure about last picking picking support, but sometimes oh, you it'd be are, like that. Yeah, no, no, it was because it was, you guys said Garage, Mev, and then they were like, "I guess we take Anduin." Yeah. Yeah. Which it's it's not like Mayav can just vault to the warden or Garage can press one button or you know Jaina can press a button at one point or you know the smelling salts at another point for Ana or anything like that. I was I was hella flaming Garage, but then I also joked that <laughs> I joked that like what Garage is really good at is like getting ten percent health and then like having the other tire the entire other team like really try to kill him and then having really an Ana just casually casting her Q like this like. And yeah, then they just like can't. And then, on that and then it happened. And they had yeah. that bottom fight. I was like, it literally just happened. They tried so hard to kill him. And then they just got re engaged. 
Yeah, uh, it's so disgusting. You know what I did? I did camps. Oh boy. <laughs> hey, did night nice job. I'm really, I'm really proud of you, That's Tyler. The way of the may have. Did I did camps good? and soaked lanes and pressed my R. There you go. Look at that. You do have 17k XP. That'll boy. <laughs> Keep it up. Wait, did I, how many times did I die? Um, I one. You only died once. Wait, was that the least death? Uh, uh, Pirate had yeah. one as well. Dang. Hanzo had one as well. I mean, you were trying to you were trying to get them at the end. I saw that. I saw you chasing them. I saw you saying get over here, trying to trying to get that trying to pad your stats a little bit for the for the uh, in house league. Oh. <laughs> Are we yep. keeping track of sets? Hold on. No, no, no. But yes, but <laughs> yes, a, me and but yes, me and Bahar. No, we no we we aren't keeping track yeah, yeah, of we sets are. at we all. Are, mm -mm. We know we uh, know yeah. every time uh every time you guys uh, pick garage. No, trust me. Wait, wait, Samario Kerrigan undefeated. With me and Valmar. Me and Valmar undefeated. I don't know how that game went. That Brainer just didn't <laughs> die. I, that one I, fight. Honest to God, like, honest right. to God, I was I was saying to Mac in the draft, I was like, this is this is the best. Like yeah, this, this draft will work really well. <laughs> okay, and last, it did. <laughs> last question for you guys. Are yeah. you guys are you guys gonna play Tyrael? Well, I'm still talking I about Tyrael because the EU. What's up? What's up? What's up with that? I mean, yeah, it's I like it's like it's like different teams every week. So it depends yeah, on the tank player. Are tanks playing Tyrael right now? And then I some not, not no really. I don't know I feel like I feel like Tyrael it used to be. was not good in too many of the situations that we were what, what were some of the drafts Let's dude see. I love Tyrael that's my hero like I really like Tyrael with Rainer Ooh, was back it, in the like, day he could have cast been yeah it could have been on cursed Ooh. but yeah I want the I want the block for Gray man mm. and the mm. kill okay. doesn't yeah. Tyrael just get regen when he I mean I though? guess Tyrael so the thing. The thing with Tyrael is, if your teammates are coordinated and know how to play with Tyrael, he's really strong. But then, if you don't, then like he's they just run past him and kill your backline. Right? True. It's like a hero that gets value if you coordinate and have, you know, play as a team. But if you don't, then the heroes can't really stop them from coming in, right? I guess it's just like you think of something like a Deathwing, and then. Or like even a Maev, like even the draft you guys just had, and like Tyrael's just pretty good against that, right? Just immediately yeah. stops yeah. everything you're trying to do. They could just cocoon the Tyrael, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, you could cocoon him, but that's about that's literally that's it. like then they yeah, have, that's it. then they have yeah. Ming as well. I'm pretty sure they did, right? So no, um, or did you guys have Ming? They had a, a cursed to Haka Stuke off my upgrade. Oh, I never okay, played Ming. Yeah. You guys never played Ming. They played Ming twice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, Bob I guess they can was web. like insane Ming. He kept living with one HP on BOE. I, I know. I kept song. I, was I like, kept comboing him, dude. On <laughs> lives every time with one HP, losing my mind. All right. Well, <laughs> I would say oh, GGs, okay. guys. You guys played well. This was fun, fun series tonight. Hope you guys had fun. Yeah. Dude, I had fun. Yeah, for sure. I had fun every time I played this, yeah. actually. Any quick shout outs any of you'd like to give? The uh, the floor is yours. Just uh... shout out to you guys. Here's Arth for hosting this. You guys casting it. Thank you. Shout out to chat and my team. Yeah, shout outs to my team as well. Uh, Pirate was being really toxic though. Can we ban him? Yeah, Aww. we can do that. Okay. No. I, would, I just want to talk about the whole time. He kept saying, he kept saying, I want to talk about. It's taking talk about. <laughs> I talk about money. <laughs> um, I'll, hey, we'll, we we'll consider the request, uh, but he's probably banned, yeah. Sick. <laughs> Any other shout outs? Yeah. Uh, shout out to banning Porky too, baby. Porky's also yeah. banned now, yeah. I'm lucky. <laughs> Can we ban Tiger too? Yeah, he's banning. Tiger's banned. Fuck tiger. you. I've been banned, <laughs> baby. I've been banned, baby. Okay. <laughs> Well, mm, well shout out to my chat too. Uh, they're smacking me right now, so Ooh. All right. they want to they want to be noticed. Ooh. Oh, oh, they've been noticed. Shout out to Pirates Chat. There you go. <laughs> there you go. I'll shout them out. Thank you all so much for the games. All right, cool, yeah. uh, you all have a wonderful night. Congratulations on your victory and your Taco Bell money. And uh, <laughs> don't spend it all in one place, or do I mean that's your choice. But uh, we'll see Taco you all. Bell. Yeah, <laughs> we'll see you all next next time. week. Have a good night, Later, guys. Later. All right, I got you up here. Cool. All right, that's that's gonna be it for us, us tonight. That, right? 
that will wrap things up for week number five of the uh, Heroes Hearth in-house league. This is brought to you by the uh, Heroes CCL. So that is going to be season two coming around the corner fairly, fairly soon. Mm -hmm. And um, until then, you know, Monday nights, this is a great place to stop in, watch a bunch of fun games. I mean, we saw all the shenanigans. So uh, six o'clock PDT, nine o'clock EDT. If you see the tweets, it's going to say central. So that's going to be eight o'clock at that time. So um, easy time conversions. But Monday nights, you can find us here starting at six o'clock PDT. If you're on the West Coast, that's just the easy time for me because that's where I'm at. But yeah. um, before I run out of here, McIntyre, I, I think. There's some like quality videos that people can check out <laughs> somewhere on the internet. I just don't know where. Yeah, over at Here's Hearth on YouTube, we are uploading content constantly, all sorts. Um, now we, with in-house league, we've been uploading competitive. That is on the the Hero CCL channel. Um, so if you want to watch competitive casted games, all of our pre CCL season one, as well as our in-house footage is going there. On the Heroes Hearth channel, we're gonna have gameplays. From you know players like Grubby, Kai Berries, Trixler, um, and we have also lots of guide videos, build videos uh, coming out from people like Kyle Ferguson, even myself. So we're doing our best to create tons of really fun heroes content. So if you guys are interested in more um, outside of this uh, enjoyable Monday evening, definitely check out the channel. Uh, it's updated very frequently. We're doing our best to get that content out to you guys as frequently as possible and um, as quality as possible, honestly. So. I will say this, if you are looking to learn anything about this game, uh, Kyle Ferguson's videos on positioning, on whether it's good to draft a hero, when to draft, you know, I think there's one on Deathwing specifically, when to draft them, when to when to, when to counter them, all that kind of stuff. If you're looking just to, to up your game knowledge, it's a great place. Um, he does do a podcast called Into the Nexus, and that's also, where he talks, good. he talks a lot about it, like not paradoxes on there, and I'm sure a lot of you like them, so... Um, Jeff, definitely just check it out. Um, even just, even just swing by, hit the subscribe button, see what the videos are like, and, you know, just give a couple of watch. I mean, they're like 20 some minute videos. Great for, you know, while you're cooking dinner, you can listen to Cal Ferguson's soothing voice about here's the storm and where to, you know, position. But, um, that will wrap things up for us. For me, you can find me Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube all at Bahamut Gaming. I do a lot of casting myself on my channel, typically Monday, excuse me, Tuesdays through Thursdays and, and a Sunday stream here and there. But that will wrap things up for us. We'll see you all next Monday for more in-house league. But if you're itching for content, make sure you stop by this channel on Wednesday, starting, I think, around noon PDT. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a whole lot of content on Wednesdays. There's three different shows, one of them with Grubby, one of them with McIntyre themselves, and another one of them with the uh, Kai the big combo. Kai, Kai Berries runs that one. Yeah. Thank you. I was, I, was, I was just like, I was like, oh, wait, who runs that one again? There we one go. Of either them. way. Uh, one of them. But either way, I uh, hope you all stop by on Wednesday. See you all once again next Monday. And until then, stay safe, and we'll see you in the Nexus. Peace.